Well, guys, these are our apricot trees. This thing must have a million blooms on it. I don't think I have ever seen this tree have this many blooms. So far this year, we've had we had the hard freezes, and then after that, it has been the most wonderful year for blooming for fruit trees and stuff here at Deep South. <clears throat> it's just, it's amazing. Everything we have is literally popping. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it this much since I've lived here. Usually, what happens to us in March and April is that we get one late hard freeze. And it wipes these apricots out every year. And some of our other fruit trees also. Uh, but this year, they're telling me that uh, we're not going to have that hard freeze. Now, if I know the camera can't focus on it, but I can actually see the little apricots down inside that bloom right there. The little green apricots is down in that bloom. So every one of them has a little apricot in it. So, uh, And there's what, three trees? There's three trees here and 100,000 sprouts coming up around them. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a job going in here cutting all these sprouts off. Because this have to, I have to do this every year. I have to come in here because this is a wild apricot. And I really got some pruning I need to do on it. Because the spring, it has got water sprouts sticking up on the trees in here. So I really need to come in here and cut all these water sprouts off. Cut all these suckers off on the ground out here. It's making all these other apricot trees. And just, just have just the three or four pretty apricots we have here and see if we can't uh, get some apricots this year. Good morning, everybody. This is Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, today, I want to just take a brief moment. A lot of people ask us a lot of questions about my journals and different things like that, what I do, how I do, and all that kind of, you know, things of this nature. Well, I'm sitting here. I mean, I got, this is my 2015 rainfall journal. I kept a journal on the rainfall. And the reason I do that is like, like the month of January, we got four and five eighths of an inch the whole month. The month of February, we got two and three quarters of an inch. The month of March, we got six and a half inch. And you know, April, we got seven inches and, uh, and so on. May, we got 13 and one eighth of an inch in May. And then June, we got eight and five eighths. I keep these records in 2015. It lets me know from year to year, uh, what actually transpired with the rainfall? Has anything changed or anything like that? And it, I, I can go back, this is 2014. We got 64 and three quarter inches of rain in the year of 2014. And then I have it broke down by months. This way lets me know if a month is different over a period of time. You know, I look at the, the averages and then I look at uh, how much we got on particular days. And when a month starts coming around, I can go back to these journals and I can look at them and I can go, uh, you know, last year or five years in a row or for the last 10 years, this has been the norm. And if it doesn't fit within the norm, I know if the weather is changing or if the climate is changing or what's going on. And not only do I have a rainfall composition, I also have a journal that I keep. Now this one is in 2016, and today is March the 3rd. Outside, 
It is very foggy outside this morning, a uh, balmy 60 degrees. Um, relative humidity is 99%. Been that way for days now. Uh, a lot of people go, gosh, I don't, how do you wake up with humidity at 99%? Well, that's just life in the deep south. You learn to live with it. But March the 3rd in 2016, that morning it was 48 degrees. The high was 68 that day, and we got three-eighths of an inch of rain. When I woke up, it was cloudy. It was windy that day, and we had some light rain throughout the day. Now, what did I do that day? I planted air leaf clover in the front field and in the back field. I limed my front garden. I planted a bed of carrots, the Danvers half longs. I caught a possum at that time. And then I replanted my bell peppers because a lot of them had, had died at that point. Then I look at 2018. This is, that was 16, this is 18. And I said, now what was I doing on March the 3rd, 2018? It lets me know in my life how my homestead is progressing and what's actually taking place on the homestead. Uh, how's our planting schedule go? What's the temperatures like? Well, in 2018, on March the 3rd, it was 40 degrees when we got up. The high that day was 77. It was a sunny, breezy day that day. Uh, I put up Tyvek uh, on our new turkey building. Uh, out here, we had built by the old corn crib. We'd put a turkey, we had gotten turkeys, and we'd put Tyvek around that to keep the wind off of them. We mowed the blueberries. We uh, fertilized the blueberries. And uh, we installed a service disconnect on a, on a pump. So, I mean, that's what I was doing in 2018, and I jumped to 2020 to see the progression. On the 3rd, it was 64 degrees in 2020, so we see that it's gone from the 40s in the morning till now we're in the 60s in the morning, and the high was 75 degrees, which was normal. It was a cloudy, very windy early in the morning. Then it turned out to be a mild, beautiful day. We worked on the greenhouse that day. We potted 51 of my celebrity hybrid tomatoes. We planted the rest of the German butterball potatoes on the back hill, and we spent the rest of the day mowing our property. And then we fast forward to 2022, and we're back at the low in the morning. It was 46 degrees. The high was 79. So we see the high has gradually increased over the years. It was partly cloudy in the morning, then it turned off to be sunny. <clears throat> we went to town, we got feed and fertilizer before it went up in price. Because remember 2020, we're talking about price rises on fertilizers. We worked on a new barn. We bought shelf stable fuel for the chainsaws for the future. Now, these are the progressions of life based on journals. That's why it's so important to keep journals because journals helps us to realize where we've come from, uh, has our homestead, what's the temperatures been like on our homestead, how has things changed around the homestead, uh, how has the homestead progressed? Journals are very, very important. Now, I don't go into detail about writing anything about my personal life in these journals because uh, these are just weekly planner journals. We get them off of Amazon. But we are going to be giving away a couple of journals. As soon as we reach 300,000 subscribers, we're going to give a couple of journals away. But now that we have newer technology, I'm not dependent upon other people for my weather now. I want to talk to you about, we have a company called the Professional Weather Station here. I've been using this thing now for a couple of weeks to just see how it works. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm really liking it because I can walk into the living room and if it's set up in the living room here, I can see what's going on here at Deep South Homestead. I can tell the temperature, the humidity, how much rainfall we've had. I can tell the temperature inside the house, the temperature outside the house, the relative humidity inside the house, the relative humidity outside the house, the feel like temperatures. I mean, it is the wind speed, the wind direction, uh, whether, it, whether it's a foggy day, a sunny day, whatever, rainy day, all that shows up on this monitor here. The direction of the wind is blowing, what speed, the time, I mean, the day of the year records all that kind of stuff, and I'm very, very well satisfied with it. So now that we've used it here at Deep South Homestead, 
because most of our gardening is going to be taking place over at Pecan Grove. Now that we've come to like it so much, its permanent home will be at Pecan Grove because that's where most of our gardening is going to be taking place. And that's where I want to know more about what's going to be going on with the weather over there uh, and keeping up with the weather at Pecan Grove. I'm trying to also do a journal for both places now so that I know uh, what the temperature is like at both places. You know, does one get more rainfall than the other? Uh, you know, just different things like that I want to try to keep up with. And this device right here is going to really make it a lot easier to do that. Now for this device here, if you're interested in one of these, uh, there will be a link in the description down below. Uh, Guys, it, the, the outside sensor, <clears throat> the one thing I liked about this is this outside sensor can be set up on a metal pole. You can take a metal pole and it's got a thing that clamps around it. Uh, you can take it off and turn it sideways and you can mount it on the side of a, of a post. Uh, if you can, if you've got a 4 by 4 sticking way up in the air, you can mount it on that 4 by 4 I mean, it has a lot of different ways, but now there are some rules to it. You don't want to mount it right up on the edge of a house or something like that. It needs to be within five foot of a structure. It doesn't need to be uh, up under any trees or anything like that. It really needs to be out in the opening so that the wind can hit it like it needs to. The rain can get to it like it needs to. And you can, in order for it to be accurate to read the temperatures accurately, because if you got it against the roof on the house, uh, then the heat from the, the metal or the shingles or whatever you have on the roof is not going to be reading an accurate temperature. So that's what I like about it. it. The technology in this thing tells me that it is going to be a piece of equipment that's going to really help me out about keeping local right here where I'm at, not reading a little thing with the range pouring in at night, you know, and I'm reading a gauge like this. This thing reads within four tenths of an ounce. I mean, it reads really, really minute details of everything. And it tells me the, the, what's going on at any point during the day. If a front comes through, I know how much the temperature is dropping, whether I need to run out and cover plants. I mean, it tells me all this kind of stuff, and that's why I like it so much. But guys, this is one of the reasons why I keep journals. A weather station like this is going to make it a lot simpler for me to keep journals. I don't have to depend on one that for my town here or my community here. I don't have to go online and look and read what they say. I have a station at my property that tells me exactly what it is at my property because believe it or not, there are microclimates in places. Uh, three miles up the road right here is a huge nursery and their climate at that nursery is 100% different than it is three miles from here. Lots of times, It'll rain day after day after day up there at that nursery. We never get a drop. Just three miles away. So that's why I'm telling you, I've seen it be a dust bowl here and, and stay muddy up there. So it's all about the microclimate. We live between two big creeks here on a ridge between two creeks. And the rain will run up and down these creeks many, many times. Never rain where we're at here on these ridges and we will be bone dry. So the, that's why keeping journals is so important not only to, to just knowing what the weather's doing and being able to tell the weather for the, possibly for the future, but being able to keep up with uh, how did it affect the plants that year? What was your gardening like that year? We have our harvesting in here, how much we harvested, how the plants done, I have all that in my journals here, what days we harvested on, what days we planted on, like my sweet potatoes, I write down here when I plant my sweet potato slips and I'll say 125 days to, to harvest, I count 125 days in a journal, and on that day I write, sweet potatoes ready to be harvested this day in this particular field, this particular section of the field, and then I, you know, I totally forget about it, and then all of a sudden it gets to be that time of the year, I'm flipping through my journal, and I, and I flip that page to write something down, and I look and I go, oh, this is the week we're supposed to harvest our sweet potatoes, you know what I mean? That way you don't lose track of what you're doing. That's why journaling is one of the most important things you'll be able to do in your life. Don't only just keep records for yourself, it's for your children, for the future. It's good about keeping a gestation table for your animals. You know when your animals are born, 
You know if they had a complication while during birth. You know which cow it was. You know if you had a good bull that year. Did all of them, uh, did all your cows calve? Uh, what calf was born? Was it males? Was it females? What color were they? What were the names of them if you name them? I mean, all this kind of stuff is kept in journals. And it tells you the day that they, uh, when I see the bull breed them, I write it down in here and then I go 289 days ahead. And I go ahead and mark this as the birth date uh, for this particular cow. We have all of our brood cows named. And I know exactly when it comes that time of the year, which cow is supposed to calve on what days. It just makes it a lot simpler. Now at Pecan Grove, we're fortunate enough to have all of our cows with the exception of one right now that are gonna be calving, hopefully in the future, all at the same time. So that was our goal. And I believe we're gonna be able to accomplish that goal. So everybody needs to keep a journal. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.